I mean, this is one of the most sensational stories because I know how many emails Panchul has been sending us for verbal and doubt clearing. And I've known he's still a college student and he has kept his options open to apply either for deferred MBA programs or MIM, etc. But this is just a very different kind of story. We get such scores on a daily basis. It's not about the score. 715 is outstanding, 99th percentile, everything great. My point is something completely different here. And he will tell you how bad his verbal initially was. I don't want to say anything. And then acing the test like this in the 99th percentile is just something beyond ordinary for everything that I can see. And whatever is written here, everything, and I was amazed by this document, the error log document, as you also saw some of you. And uh, yes, verbal was a genuinely difficult section, as some of you might be struggling with it too. So let me just stop this share and we will talk to Panchul once again. Okay. So, all right, great to see you. I've been seeing only your emails, so that's great to have a face behind them. Uh, it's an incredible, first of all. I don't think you would have really believed it uh, when you saw it. And, I, I yeah, uh, can you be a bit louder? We can't hear you, sir. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, actually, I was I was in huge shock when I when I actually got the result after the exam. I was on the brink of screaming until I realized that there are people sitting beside <laughs> like me who are also taking all the exam. Right, okay. Quiet. So why don't you take us through your journey, particularly your toughest areas, what you prepared. Your error log was, by the way, mind-boggling. Let me take somebody else's opinion also here. What did you feel, everyone listening, and please tell me. I would say motivated, definitely. I was very much motivated, Panchal. Um, congratulations to you. And look at the error log. I mean, how detailed it is. If it's 1,000 plus wrong answers, and such detail. So this is really a story of that kind of triumph, that if you really put in the work with the right guidance and just continue grinding, I'm sure the other side can really be an extremely, extremely positive side. So please start with your journey and uh, let us know what the challenge was, how you went about it. I'll ask you everything in the most chronological order I can. Yeah, go ahead. Please. Sure, sir. So um, initially, so I started preparing sometime in March, um, like towards the end of March, but I had to stop in between because I had college exams um, April and June, in April, uh, sorry, May and June. So um, I did the basics um, throughout April. And then I got busy with college exams um, from mid of April uh, to mid of June. And then after mid of June, I started the life batch as well as the intensive batch. So I was doing both of those together. Um, it was because I had a lot of time on my hand. Um, I got my I had a break from college, and I was I was so ready to commit to top uh, top one percent and to GMAT. And I was very sure because I knew that this is the only probably the last time I'll get so I'll be so free. Um, because this this is the last summer break I'm getting after this. Um, I'll be I'll graduate and I'll either start working or you know finally go for my masters. So this was this was like uh, I was I was very sure that I have to put in the work and just just you know that my priority is just GMAT and nothing right. else. Right, so, right, right. So how did you start then, and what were so, the areas? Uh... Right. So I started with uh, the basics, the course from um, your end. The the I started with quants first. Because although Koans was slightly strong for me, um, I still needed some revision. Um, okay. I've, I've, I've done uh, a different aptitude test earlier, a couple of years ago, and uh, Koans was my favorite back then as well. Although when I started Koans here, I realized that I've forgotten everything. In fact, when I when I used to do the class sheets, I would get, so after, out of, if let's say we have 30, 32 questions, I would get like 17, 18 of them wrong. And I used to think if this is my strong area, and I'm already getting a 50% accuracy, you know, where will I land up? But um, for Quants, I did all the basics videos. And one thing was, um, by doing the basics videos, I made a formula notebook. So I did write the formulas that we learned in the class. But right. more importantly, after each um, chapter, I would leave a few pages empty. And those few pages I filled during my preparation. So the thing I realized is, it's not really important to know the formulas here, but their application. So every time I encountered like a new question or a new concept, I would um, uh, write that down in the notebook. And this notebook was like, you know, tips I've given to myself that I read on the last day um, of my prep. So I gave my exam on 29th and on 20th, all I did was just go through the notebook and read every note that I've written. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, you so actually said that verbal was a genuine challenge. So let's start from there. What exactly was the actual challenge? I know lots of times I also answered you. And that's a very brief image, though. But uh, sometimes, probably not so positively. I may have said yeah. some very, I mean, not not pleasant things to you, probably. So it's, go ahead, tell me about Vogel right from the beginning. So we, 
verbal, I was very, very scared. I had a lot of phobia, again, back from IPMAT. And in general, verbal, I never really understood explanations. And even after attending classes, I was unsure until you gave us one advice. You said that um, we should do every question extremely slowly and be very short. So, so when you said that, I, I will sit on one question, even if it takes a whole day, and just make sure that the answer is correct. And even, even if anyone tries to challenge me later, um, I will have reason for choosing this answer as well as reasons for eliminating the other four. So that is when I realized I was never able to learn and grow in verbal because everything I did was in my mind. So while reading the explanations, I forgot why I chose the answer I chose. So I never really understood what mistake I was making. So um, to rectify this, I made a whole new notebook where um, for RCs, I did 50 RCs so slowly. I would read an RC. I would write the OCT analysis of it. And then for each question I write, um, I would, for every question, I would write the four um, the four and uh, the four choices that I'm eliminating, and the reason why I'm eliminate, eliminating them, and then the one choice that I'm choosing, and the reason why I'm choosing this. So later, when I actually when I got things wrong, even after this, although this was an excruciatingly long process, um, I, I gained so much conceptual clarity, and I was I was able to pinpoint where I'm going wrong, even if it's a yeah. verification mistake. Did I read things wrong? Did I verify from the wrong location? So I was able to identify and pinpoint exactly where I'm making my mistakes. Um, oh, same yeah. with CR. I, in fact, so I have a confession here. I'm barely done in CR um, because I do not need to. So once you told us about the assumption centrality technique, I did the entire topic wise for assumptions. Um, mm -hmm. Same in the same manner on the on that notebook. And after that, I was so good. I had a hundred percent accuracy in every CR question that I did not even have to pick up seven hundred, eight hundred, and do any other topic wise for CR except board race. Wow, that's fantastic to know. Fantastic. So you your RC eventually did improve. Like how much time did it take before so, you could say that? Yeah, it, is it took me about two weeks of this process, and after two weeks, I gained uh, close to one hundred percent accuracy. But my timing was still still, still slow. So I was doing from seven hundred, eight hundred, and uh, around the fiftieth RC, I stopped writing things. After fifty one, I guess I stopped writing things. I was able to do it in my mind, but I would take ten minutes per RC. Um, mm -hmm. I was able to save up this time uh, during mocks by uh, because I was very quick with CR because before the before doing RC I had done two weeks of CR um, just as slowly and uh, although towards the end I I rewatched the intensive sessions all of them for RC and mm -hmm. by the end I'm not kidding so um, in the last ten days I would wake up every single day and the first thing in the morning I would do is do two RCs from 700 800 and uh, in the last 10 days i did not get a single answer wrong in the rcs and i was able to do a few rcs as quick as four minutes this includes answering the questions as well wow so the entire minutes. passage and answering in the entire four passage and answering in four minutes yes okay. and yeah so um i did I, I was slightly shocked when i saw uh, the verbal section of gmat and uh, i was just i was thanking myself that i've done all this practice because if i hadn't i probably would not have been able to deal with verbal Okay, how about DI section? How did you go about it? Uh, did you yeah, do the entire yeah. practice from the portal? Did you skip some things? Within um, CR, you said you did skip some parts, which was obviously fine if your accuracy reaches 100% and speed also. How about DI overall? So in DI, I faced a lot of struggle with IR. And um, I tried everything. I tried to make a strategy. Actually, I did end up making a strategy which helped. But um, it all came down to long, the long sitting. So even in the last one week when I was ready to book my exam, um, I was not able to score well in IR. And in, initially, you know, I did written like a long email that I thought I will send to top 1% um, addressing the issue until I realized that I've followed almost every advice you've given except doing long sittings. Okay. So I spent four days consecutively just doing long sittings. And after that, uh, the result was phenomenal. So by then, I'd done every practice. In fact, I've completed the entire portal except the sectional tests. Oh, I've done okay. two sectional tests of each, um, mm -hmm. yeah, of each topic. But apart from that, I've done the entire portal. Okay. And when did you start writing full mocks, like official and our both? Okay. So uh, actually, I wrote a couple mocks before I even enrolled, but mm -hmm. I don't really count those. And uh, the first mock I wrote was. Uh, I think 15th of July, yeah, the DR classes ended. And in, and in the intensive batch, you were supposed to write in, write to mock and discuss it later on a, on a Sunday class. So that right. was the last mock, around 15th of July. Um, so how did you thing, perform and uh, like, what, what were the realizations? So in the top of the first mock, I gave my score was around 535. And I remember I told you in class that um, if I had not wasted time on a few questions, I could have easily gotten 10 more questions correct here. Right. And um, yes. So that's when I realized that strategy is very important here. Um, mm -hmm. Deciding when when I should leave a question and which question I should leave um, was something I worked on. So initially, I'd given the official mock one in like March. Um, uh, so I gave the official mock two 
around I think 21st of July, one week after 15th, and um, I got a 650, and mm -hmm. cut to 26th of um, September. So September, sorry, August. August. Yeah. August. Yeah. yeah. I've lost track of time. But on 26th, I gave the official mark one again. I'd forgotten everything from March, and I scored right. 725 there. So I was okay. pretty confident by then. And what so, are your scores in our mock portal? Uh, in the mock portal? Right. I was I started at five thirty five and I ended at six thirty five. But on average they were close to six oh five. Five ninety five and six oh five. Those okay. are the two scores I was getting. Right, um, right. Any tips you will have for people? First of all, let's also talk about your exam experience. Anything unusual on the exam day in terms of the uh, setting, the atmosphere, anything else like that? Actually the, the exam uh, the center I went to was incredible. Um, it was so quiet. So there were two rooms. Both of those were soundproof. Each room had seven people sitting. And we got noise cancelling headphones. And uh, the desk was so spacious. And at every desk, we had like partition tables. So I, honestly, I could not even tell that there's someone sitting beside me giving, giving an exam. And I was able to focus so well just on the paper. And the staff there was extremely helpful. I, I even needed an extra scratch pad towards the end. And they were there in a few seconds. And uh, my my experience with the center was amazing, and talking about the questions that I got. Um, so okay, verbal, first, first tell the order 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 of sections. Right. Okay. So I start with verbal because it takes a lot of energy. Um, because you know you have to be actively reading a lot. After that, I took a ten minute break. I did DI and quants. Okay. Anything unusual? Yeah. Anything out of the ordinary? Apart from whatever you've done, let us know in each section one by one. Except I, I got one data sufficiency verbal DS question. Um, I was running out of time twice, so I skipped it. I actually did not even read the question. So um, I think if I'd gotten a chance to read it, I might have done, done it correctly. But I don't remember the question, and I skipped it. Apart, Apart from, from that, that, I was I was very, very well versed with everything. In fact, I would like to tell you, in quants, um, I was able to do all the 21 questions on, in under 25 minutes. So I had 20 minutes left, and I did every single question twice. Wow. Um, so you bookmarked how, everything? Or what? Like you just book no, no, I, I bookmarked a few questions, but you can visit as many questions as you like. That's right, that's right. You can go back. So I, right. I went, so I first I went back to the question that I bookmarked, and after that, I revised every single question that I had. Uh, I this still is... had time. Uh, okay, Panchal, I have a question. Honestly, where does this motivation for maintaining such detailed error logs, where did this come from? Because uh, we give the error logs to everyone, but I barely see this level of detail this level of analysis and this is not over like 50 or 100 problems this is over it you said 1000 plus i can very clearly see must have been 1000 plus short questions so so i was asking you about the motivation first of all to be maintaining such detailed error logs and did you get the time to go through everything because i can maintain but what about revisiting so just tell us because it it will genuinely help everyone yeah the error logs this is something i learned when i was audio preparing for ipmat um, that the only learning and the most important learning I get is from the mistakes I make. Um, so the thing is, if I do one question and I'm able to take out five mistakes from it, right? If I'm able to realize that, okay, I was not able to do the question because I was under time pressure, because I was not able to react to the question I've uh, gotten, because my concept is not clear. So when I'm able to get five mistakes out of one question, that saves me the time of, you know, doing five, com committing five more errors later. Um, so that's when I so that's how I always knew that the only and the best way or the most efficient way for me to learn is through my error logs. And uh, once I'm able to identify, you know, Hindi me kehte na ki baal ki khal nikalna. So understanding every every detail of why I've made a mistake helped me just get quicker, and I could see the changes every day. Um, right. that, that's where because because I can see the change. So for the first week, it was extremely boring and very painful because you know when you're reading the mistakes you've made, it was like a hit on my ego that you know am I this dumb? I can't I can't even do such a simple question. Um, right. But towards the towards the end, I start to see when I see growth every single day. Um, I I understood that okay, you know what this is this is probably the most crucial part of my prep, and hence that's where it came from. And could you revise everything? Like could you genuinely? Revise I could. It? I could actually. Uh, I would sit every Sunday and just revise every single mistake I've made in the past week. Wow. Apart from that, when I made conceptual uh, uh, mistakes in any mock, I would re revise the concept from the formula book that I already mentioned earlier and um, also do the error log one minute. All right, Panchal. Some tips, uh, do's and don'ts for people. They should not do this. They should do this if you can probably because uh, this is a new batch and they'll be writing the exam in two and a half to three months from today, which is what your state was when you were a student because you were attending it around that time. So, so just let us know hopefully.
So the first thing I'll tell you, I didn't make a, mis- uh, mis- make a mistake. I thought I will, I want a variety of questions. So I went on a lot of websites trying to get questions. In fact, towards the end, I got a free subscription from GMAT Lab. But the thing is, the questions are very similar to those you see on top, but the quality is really bad. By quality, I mean the solutions that you get are very clear here in top, but not, not available online. And the material is in so much abundance, like I said, I'm left with a lot of material even right now. So it's not like you're ever going to run out before the of material before the exam. So I would suggest that you do not waste, spend your time or waste your time scouting other material online. Um, you can save a lot of time and just study uh, from top. Another thing was uh, maintain error logs. I think we've already talked about that in detail, but error logs is where we really, really learn from and um, consistency. So uh, for the last 10 days, uh, my the last 10 days of my prep were really difficult. Because first I realized I don't have a valid passport. It uh, it was it became invalid a month ago. So I spent two days trying to get that. And then I then my laptop broke down. I felt sick. So throughout this process, I was not able to study. In the last 10 days, I was able to study for three days at most. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, so every morning when I'd wake up, I would do two RCs from 700, 800 and play the arithmetic game. And towards the end, I started writing all the cubes and the squares and the factorials every morning mm-hmm. on one sheet of paper. And even when I was not able to study throughout the day, I, I could still stay in touch with everything because I've done like 15 minutes or 20 minutes of uh, studying in the morning before starting my day. So it helped me stay in touch throughout, even when I would lost track. So, you know, towards the end, I was studying up to eight to 10 hours a day. And then from that, you suddenly go to not studying at all because, you know, you're running to the passport office or you're sick uh, right. or if any emergency comes up. So it's very it's very difficult to get back in the schedule. But if you stay in touch just a little every day, even 15 minutes a day on because on the day your baby is more than enough. Um, those those will be my do's and don'ts. That's the way, you know, I have to tell these tips for everyone. Right. And uh, I don't think we were able to complete that question. So apart from the question that you couldn't attempt in the DI section, you did not see anything that was unusual altogether. Nothing at all. I was aware of every type of question. I'd come across every question. So like I mentioned, reaction time was a, a little issue for me, especially in quants and DI. But towards the end, because I was so familiar with every every single type of question, I could react to it very quick. And that reaction saves up to two minutes sometimes. And um, I was I was very clear with it. All right, Panshul, superb performance. And what can I say? I mean, this is just so incredible. The kind of email that you wrote, so such detailed and... Yes, we all have answered your doubts, I think, because you've asked quite a few. But I, I'm very glad eventually it has all paid off. All the very best. And whenever you apply, do get in touch. Continue your research. You Definitely. just finished second year right now, that means. Right? Yes, and you yes. moved into third year probably. That's the, this month. Okay. Yes. So you do have some time for masters anyway. And deferred also, you do have some time. All right. Thanks. Thanks a lot for your time. And Thank all the very so best. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.